All right, my life changed when I started these habits. Let's dive into it, fellas. Back with another video today, and this one is in the wisdom life experience uh, category. This is a recent article I wrote at missionlifemotion.com, and I, of course, uh, want to do the video version as well. So let's start with a quote. A quote from the late, great Jim Rohn. And it goes, if you work on your goals, your goals will go to work on you. If you go to work on your plan, your plan will go to work on you. Whatever good things we build end up building us. That was Jim Rohn. And uh, he, you don't know who Jim Rohn is, I would highly suggest you find out fast because uh, anybody who doesn't, honestly, anyone who doesn't know who he is, I feel bad for. So he's got some, some really good stuff. So in this video, guys, I'm gonna discuss the top eight habits that have changed my life, okay? The top eight. And I believe these will change your life as well if you implement them. Um, for the most part, uh, at least the, the, the people that watch this channel, we tend to have somewhat similar interests. So these have been very impactful in my own life. Uh, odds are they'll be very in, impactful and helpful to yours as well. So most of these are more recent changes actually that I've made. Uh, in the last few years, some of them even in the last few months, but uh, two or three of them are habits I started years ago. So I'll talk about them as we go. Guys, if your life starts to feel like it's going off the rails, you can always come back to this video and it will get you re-centered, okay? Because the foundation of this are these eight habits. That's the foundation for an epic life, a meaningful life, uh, a mission-driven life, and uh, you'll hopefully understand that as we go through these. So it took me a long time, years even, to figure out how to prioritize my day, guys, okay? My day-to-day -day life. Looking back <clears throat> on my life, which I've had a lot of time to do the last few months, okay? Um, it took me a long time to figure out how to, you know, manage my life on a micro level. On a macro level, I've always had um, a very firm grasp on prioritization, on the things that matter in life, um, that really matter. On a, on a macro level, I have always had a rock solid grasp of that. On a more micro day-to-day -day level though, um, I just never knew how to truly optimize things. Um, and I feel like in recent months, I've learned how to do that. So the difference between being good at something, guys, and being exceptional at it may only look like a small difference, but they're further apart than they appear, okay? It's actually a huge difference. And to be fair, in my own life, my world got sort of turned upside down in August when uh, I sold my business back in Texas and I moved abroad to Europe, Eastern Europe. That experience basically forced me to go back to the drawing board. Why? Because the kind of day-to-day -day life that I used to lead with my old business was drastically different than what it looks like now. Uh, it was just the nature of the business I was in at that time versus now. They're just very different. I used to have an outside office down the street from where I lived that I used to drive to. Um, I would drive to and from three appointments per day, uh, most of which weren't at my office. They were in, you know, offices, houses, um, school buildings around the American suburb I lived in. I spent a ton of time in my car. I would drive all over town every day, okay? This was actually in Irvine in Las Colinas, Texas, between the years of 2015 and 2020. <clears throat> At this point, I have no problem telling you guys exactly where it was, okay? It doesn't matter now. But um, 
Towards the end of this run, I you know, would spend my mornings working out of the local Starbucks for three to four hours. Um, it was actually the, the busiest Starbucks, uh, I believe, uh, at least in the state of Texas, if not the whole country, that, that one that I worked out of in Las Colinas. But anyway, um, haven't been there in a while. I have no idea what it looks like now. But uh, yeah, I'd, I would work out of there for a few hours every morning. Then I'd head over to my first appointment or into my office. My office was more so a place to print things, store things, and to stir up Kratom. Um, if you guys haven't seen my articles on Kratom, I'll try to link those down below. I highly encourage you to check those out. Uh, doing this helped take the edge off. Uh, the type of business I had could be very stressful with a lot of ups and downs, and Kratom really helped me take the edge off. Uh, really helped me take the edge off and it you know I attribute to a lot of the success I had in being able to build that up and sell it in in four years um, which is not easy to do so anyway so when COVID-19 hit everything changed as you can imagine I went from running all over town each day to being confined to my apartment at first okay uh, even my office building was closed for several weeks, okay? And after five years of living the way I did, this sudden change drove me crazy. And it was not easy to adapt to it, okay? Um, the thing is, my day-to-day -day life was about to dr change drastically anyway. I just hadn't realized it yet. I knew I was going to be selling my business and moving overseas to Europe, so I was going to have to get used to a new life anyway especially a new work life. COVID-19, for some reason, wasn't a big thing when I first moved over here, okay, in Eastern Europe, even though I had moved in August of 2020, which was right in the middle of the pandemic, it still, they still didn't seem to give a shit about it over here at that time. That all changed in November 2020 when Serbia, which is where I am, basically went into full lockdown, closing all coffee shops, cafes, restaurants, expat co-working spaces, etc. I was resigned to having to work out of my apartment again all day, every day for weeks and weeks, days and weeks on end. No longer did I have breaks built into my day like I used to. I had to consciously take them now. Many other people experienced this after COVID-19 hit. They also had to learn to suddenly start working from home every day. Uh, even for me, for somebody who's been self-employed for several years now, even for me, this was a mind fuck. Um, I wasn't used to being home all day like that, right? Uh, not even being able to go to a damn coffee shop, right? Um, when it happened in Texas in March and early April of 2020, I mean, that's all it was. It was like five weeks and then, well, then I moved and I don't know, things got uh, kind of unusual there right before I moved out here because I had moved to, to Austin and things were just different. But I just wasn't used to being home all the time like that out here. and. Uh, for a long time, for years, this is the, what I'm what I'm driving at. For five years, my life was getting in and out of my car all day and having face-to-face -face appointments with people. So, I used to give public presentations at group meetings. Um, another thing that messed me up over here was the weather change. I was used to living in mostly sunny this the mostly sunny state of Texas, where the days were long, even in the winter, and. Uh, I realized over here in Eastern Europe as time wore on that as the fall wore on that this was not the case over here due to its distance from the equator. Um, in Serbia, the winter in the winter, it's pitch black outside by 4.20 p.m. in the afternoon, okay? No shit. Um, and while this may not sound like a big deal, it's much different when you have to live through it you know, when you work from home um, and you have to keep yourself motivated all day, every day. And I don't mean like being employed working from home. I mean being self-employed working from home and have to keep yourself ultra-focused and ultra-motivated 
every day. Um, it's much different when you're not used to when you're not used to that. And I realize there are places in the United States, maybe I believe Boston is like that. Definitely Canada, Chicago. Uh, they're about the same distance from the equator as Serbia is, and that's par for the course for those people. They grew up with that. They're used to it. I'm used to Texas, and I was used to that. Uh, so once I got over here, I had to get used to that. I also had to get used to working from home all the time, not even being able to leave and go to a coffee shop, being socially isolated all the time, living in another country halfway across the world, amongst people who spoke a different language than me and during COVID-19 lockdowns. I mean, guys, moving abroad, okay, for the first time is hard enough all by itself, but throw all that on top of it and you will really get tested, I promise you. So I quickly realized I was going to have to mentally adapt to my new life in more ways than one. Um, all these crazy life changes happening at once meant for me that it was now going to be much easier to get burnt out than it used to get. Uh, and I ended up having two major burnout periods, unlike anything I've experienced before. One was in December and one was more recently. Um, the more recent one was March, April. Uh, the more recent one was a little more spread out. It lasted longer. It wasn't quite as potent. I was still able to get a decent, somewhat decent amount of work done, but the one in December was shorter, a lot shorter, um, because it got cut off when I left to go home and visit family for Christmas, but uh, it was a lot more potent. Okay, so anyway, um, when this happened a second time recently in March, April, I was forced to self-examine what was causing these burnout periods, and that's the whole subject of this video. Um, for now, just know this was all a huge mind fuck for me, all right? All these life changes happening one right after another, and I realized that if I wanted to preserve my energy levels, okay, and be able to, um, you know, adapt and get used to this new way of working, being self-employed, working online all day, um, I was going to have to manage my energy better. Um, keep in mind, I also uh, turned 35 in January. Um, so I'm about to be 35 and a half and uh, I'm getting a little older and uh, it's not, I don't have the energy I had when I was 25. So that's another thing. Um, but what am I getting at here? This led me to realizing number one on this list here, which was that the, one of the most important things I can do every single day is effectively prioritizing it. Effectively prioritizing my day, and that's number one, okay? I wasn't gonna be able to ignore my daily energy like I used to be able to in my 20s or early 30s, okay? I was going to have to start paying very close attention to how I was expending it. Um, just to give you an example, here were the top four to five things, guys, I realized that I needed to change. I was going to need to change. Uh, number one, starting my work within two and a half to three hours, um, really two and a half hours of w getting out of bed every day, all right? Doing this has helped me ensure that I get all my, all the day's work minutes in um, and I, uh, that I get them all in period and that I still have time left over at the end of the day to do things, uh, to do other things, all right? Uh, Non-work related things because it's not really fun, uh, guys, to have to work all the way up until you go to sleep. Um, even though I had gotten used to that, it's not, I don't prefer that. I want to have time left over at the end of the day to do my own stuff instead of front loading my day with personal stuff. I like it to be the other way around. So that's the first thing. Second thing, making sure I implemented reading time each morning. Morning. Uh, this was slash is the one thing I allow myself to do first every day before I start working. It gets my creative juices flowing and it always gives me uh, ideas for tweets, if you're not following me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, Mission Life Motion. Uh, third thing, meditating. 
which is the other part of my morning routine, all right? Uh, I started this in January and gave up on it uh, after not really giving it its fair shot. Uh, I am now realizing uh, that I stumbled upon this when I did for a reason. I shouldn't have walked away from it and I'm, st and I'm getting back into that right now. Um, I should have just stuck with it when I started it in January, which like I said, I didn't, but that has been big. And the fourth one is, um, you know, prioritizing the big three, right? I call it the big three, the big three areas of my life above everything else, which are mission, life, motion, work, number one, um, uh, fitness, the fitness and exercise part of my life, and number three, my dating and sex life, which includes my social life. These are the big three in any man's life uh, and should be treated as such. Um, guys, don't let those trad cons, okay, um, tell you that dating is a waste of time. Your sex life is important, okay? Without a girlfriend, a wife, um, or a dating life, you have no sex life, period. All right, and oftentimes, men don't even have sex lives with wives or girlfriends, okay? Um, there's a reason for this, all right? Um, you can't get a quality girl without first dating many, all right? Unless you're hiring prostitutes, which is a bad long-term strategy, uh, not to mention expensive, you simply aren't going to find a woman, okay, a diamond in the rough without sorting through many women, all right? One sec. So, anyway. You won't even know how to recognize a good, uh, good girl from a bad one, okay? I don't care what anyone says, that's the truth, all right? Um, every quality girl I've dated in my life, I only found after realizing what bad ones were like, all right? This, uh, I've got a, uh, a couple articles that will help you on that. I've linked those down in the description below. Check those out. Um, if your goal is to find a wife or a girlfriend, this is a little bit of a tangent, but let me get this out real quick. If your goal is to find a wife or a girlfriend, um, yes, if you're still dating around after five to 10 years, you know, seven, eight years, you're doing something wrong, okay? Unless, you know, if, if that's what your goal is, to find a wife or a girlfriend. However, I firmly believe it takes two to three solid years of dating many women to find one worth committing to, okay? It, let me repeat that because a lot of guys don't seem to get this, okay? It takes a solid two to three years of dating many women to find one worth committing to, okay? And if you happen to find one a lot sooner than that, it is just pure blind luck, okay? And I just would be very, very careful with that because a lot of times guys think they're getting lucky and they find out years later they severely screwed their lives up. So don't be one of those guys. Um, more than anything with this little point I'm, I'm saying here, guys, is like you won't know how to deal with women. You won't understand them. So without the ability to understand women, which you only get by dating many of them, you're flying blind, okay? Every win you get is by accident, okay? So that's all I wanted to say, a little bit of a tangent, but let's continue. Number two, number two habit that changed my life waking up before the sun. Nothing will start your day off on the right foot faster than this will, guys, all right? This is something I've been doing for years now. Um, I was doing this before I even had my insurance business, all right? I realized at a pretty young age the immense benefits of getting and waking up early, specifically for productivity, getting more done each day, and just the way I felt about myself, all right? Um, Every time I have a day where I get up early, I feel great about myself. Every time. Um, I have a sense of pride, a sense of accomplishment, and a sense of confidence and momentum. Most of the time, not only do I feel this way at the end of those days, I feel this way right out of the gate, okay? So I'm starting my day off in a great way. I feel like a winner, an ass kicker, and a champion. The way you feel about yourself, guys, is so damn important. All right, um, anyone who's ever been successful in life will tell you that. Uh, I remember hearing in, Grant Car in one of Grant Cardone's books, um, which I've, I've read all of them more than once, 
but in one of his books, he said, nothing good happens after 9 p.m. at night, all right? Now, think what you want about Grant Cardone, um, but the guy was, you know, was right on the money about certain things, and that was one of them, all right? Nothing good happens after 9 p.m. at night, all right? Unless you're having sex, all right? Um, and, you know, there's only, there's diminishing returns on that as well. So, you know, sleep is extremely, extremely, extremely important, guys. Um, you know, be very careful what you compromise it for. So, my granddad used to say, I get more done by 10 a.m. than most people do all day. So, um, I identify with that statement. So did my dad and so do I, okay? So, I mean, that's been passed down for generations, but uh, getting up before the sun has been a huge one. Number three, eat energy sustaining food. What you put into your body will make an enormous difference in the way you feel. All right, guys, who do you think, who do you think feels better one day to the next? The guy that eats pizza, Doritos, and drinks Coke every day or the guy that eats a high protein, low carb diet, uh, maybe he drinks green juice and exercises daily. The answer is very obvious, isn't it? Yet people still often forget simple things like this. Um, the months, thinking back to earlier this year, the months between January of this year and the, you know, and the middle of March were insanely productive for me, okay? Early January and mid-March uh, were insanely productive for me, and the reason for that, there were reasons for that, okay? And here's a quick list. It had a lot to do with what I was putting into my body, what I was consuming. So here are some of them. Water, a decent amount of water. Um, coffee, quite a bit of coffee. A lot of protein, okay? Meat and eggs, mostly. Potatoes and sweet potatoes. Um, carrots broccoli, green apples, bananas, cheese, sardines. Uh, sardines are good because of the omega-3 fatty acids they give you. I don't eat canned tuna because tuna has a high mercury count. Um, so I switched over to sardines a few years ago, but there's those and then the occasional snack of dark chocolate, all right? All of my meals that I would cook in butter, real butter, not margarine, uh, or uh, if I was having f fish, I'd usually cook that in olive oil. Um, the only thing I wasn't doing um, that would have made me feel even better would have been juicing, uh, drinking green, green juice. Um, I wasn't drinking alcohol, okay, which was huge, and I would contain my cheat meals to only Saturday evening to Sunday evening. Not saying I wouldn't occasionally fall off and start cheating a little early on some weeks, but uh, for the most part, I adhered strictly to that schedule right there. The longer I focused on living each day and each week intentionally, guys, um, with, with all this, the easier it got, all right? I had a weight loss and body fat percentage goal I was trying to hit by the end of, by the uh, middle of March, so, you know, that time goal is uh, what kept me on track. And I believe coming up with one of these for yourself, guys, is likely to keep you on track as well. Um, you know, with each passing day, it was easier and easier to stay focused on my mission um, when I was feeling fueling my body with the right stuff. Um, I was also taking Kratom, which I think I mentioned a few minutes ago. So check those articles out that I wrote um, on Kratom. And uh, I was taking Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mind Smooth, um, I, which I also wrote an article on. I'll, I'll link all those down below. But those were cognitive performance enhancing uh, substances I was, I was taking, uh, you know, in addition to that diet. Um, but yeah, so these, these were like two of the most productive months of my life. So that's why I'm, you know, talking about them. Let's go to the fourth one. Dressing my best. Number four, dressing my best every day. Now, dressing your best, guys, doesn't mean that, you know, you have to wear a three-piece suit from sunup till sundown, all right? Dressing your best means you wear comfortable, form-fitting clothing that makes you feel like a winner. 
When you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you're more likely to win. All right, simple as that. Remember what I said earlier in the video, guys, about feeling good about yourself. Um, this is absolutely critical if you want to win in life. Trust me, all right, or don't, and you can go find out for yourself the hard way, all right? Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to save you guys the trouble here, all right? Um, Self-respecting men care about their appearance. That's what this all boils down to. Anyone who tells you otherwise is a jackass, okay? Self-respecting men care about their appearance. They take pride in it. Um, for your style, guys, if you need some help putting together a look for yourself, every guy should have a look. Um, you should never uh, try to look generic or average. You should have your own look. And if you need help coming up with a look for yourself, I suggest you read the book, The Appearance of Power by Tanner Guzzi. That's a good one, <clears throat> so read that one. Let's go to the next one, number five, habit number five, lifting weights. This is actually, I believe, the first one on this whole list that I started. I've said this before in previous videos, you can't really call yourself a man, guys, if you don't lift weights. I'm sorry. If you think that's harsh, too bad. You just can't. I mean, unless your doctor has said you shouldn't, you don't have an excuse, all right? I started lifting weights before I was a man at the ripe young age of 14, all right? Even seriously lifting weights when I was 14. Um, not like bodybuilder seriously, but um, I was doing that when I was, shit, 15 and a half. So lifting weights will teach you a lot about life, guys, all right? It will teach you a lot about your own body, about your own limits. Um, it's helped mold me into the man I've become today. All right, um, you'll feel better physically, you'll look better, you'll sleep better, people will treat you better, um, especially women, especially girls. Everyone will treat you better though. Um, I mean, I could go on and on and on, all right? There isn't one part of your life that will not vastly improve by lifting weights. That will not vastly improve by lifting weights. There's not one part of your life that won't do that. So I cannot endorse that enough. Um, and if you guys want a great book on that, I suggest you check out uh, Shredded Ops by John Doe Bodybuilding, as well as Body of an Alpha by John Anthony. I'll link both of those down below. Those will help you come up with a lifting regimen. I alternate between both of those workout programs and I highly encourage you to uh, grab one or both of those books. They are more than worth the money, okay? Shredded Ops by John Doe Bodybuilding and Body of an Alpha by John Anthony. All right, number six, fasting. Now this is something I started doing um, this year on a more serious note anyway. Uh, intermittent fasting was something I discovered a few years ago shortly after Mission Life Motion started and it was something I dabbled in. Um, I did it on and off over the next few years, but was never truly consistent with it until recently. Um, hold on a second, guys. It's getting kind of dark in here. Let's see. I think we can do that. Uh, let me just get the lighting right. Okay. Yeah, so intermittent fasting. Um, I, did, I was never truly consistent with it until recently as in a few years ago recently. I've known about it for much longer than that, but what fasting has done for me more than anything is it has simplified my life, all right? Uh, it's simplified my life a bit. Um, not a lot, but believe me, guys, these days, for a guy like me, a little bit of this goes a long way, all right? Um, the more decisions you have to make every day, the sooner your energy levels get depleted, and you only get so much of that each day. Um, when you're a busy man with a business like me, even having one less decision to make each day is huge, all right? So that one less decision in this example was what to have for breakfast, right? So I know every day that I get up at a certain time, I have my three cups of coffee, uh, I'm on, and I'm on high energy mode until lunch. Okay, that's another thing. Not only is there one less decision to make, but your body doesn't have to digest a meal every morning. 
All right, now combine coffee with Kratom, um, you know, some Gorilla Mine Smooth if it's not out of stock, and uh, you've got a recipe for an insanely productive morning, okay? Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, even if you don't take the Kratom or, or the Gorilla Mine, I mean, if you just have coffee and you skip breakfast, you, you'll have an insanely productive morning, um, either way. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's no better way to get your day started off on the right foot than by getting shit done and getting it done with energy, okay, and enthusiasm. This is how momentum is built, okay, and momentum is everything. Um, you know, positive momentum leads to better things happening to you throughout the day and throughout the week. So um, the other thing I notice is, you know, lunch and dinner are also both appreciated much more when I've earned them, okay? I appreciate them a lot more. And fasting trains your mind to be disciplined. So anything that gives you discipline is a very, very good thing, guys, okay? Uh, so these last two points, um, these last two, number seven and eight, don't have quite as much to do with energy, but they were two changes I made. Um, I made in my life that, that changed it for the better, okay? Um, obviously, which is why they're on the list, but um, there was absolutely, absolutely no question on these, um, so I had to include them here. Um, um, they're just not related to energy, they're just related to, um, there are two things that changed my life, right, for the better. So number seven is reading, reading and listening to books, all right? I started reading and listening to books uh, years ago, all right? Um, it wasn't until about one or two years ago, though, guys, that I really started to take this seriously. Um, I say that, um, but that's by my own standards, right? I imagine, you know, many people would look at what I was doing even eight years ago and would probably think even then it was a lot, but by my own standards, I mean, yeah, I was listening to books mostly at that time. Uh, still do mostly listen to them. I read too, but back then, um, you know, prior to two years ago, I, it was at a much slower pace and it was around a year, year and a half ago or so that I started taking that part of my life more seriously. Um, how so? I started setting goals for how many books per month I would read, um, how many hours per week and per day I would listen to. Uh, in other words, I started setting quantitative goals, all right? These work better for certain people, okay? Especially men. Uh, remember guys, what Peter Drucker said, what gets measured gets managed. What gets measured gets managed. So. Um, there are also certain books I'd make it a point to re-listen to a certain number of times, okay? The books I really resonated with, I, I would make, make sure I'd re-listen to them, um, you know, anywhere from 5 to 15 times. And no, I'm not joking. Um, the more you resonate with a particular book, the more you should re-listen to it, okay? The more you resonate with a book, the first time you listen to it, the more it jumps out at you and, and snags your, grabs your attention, the more you should re-listen to that book, okay? There's books I've listened to 12 times, okay? 12 times. Um, so, uh, let's see. Yeah, now, The Rational Mail by Rolo Tomasi is one such book. I haven't listened to that 12 times yet, but that's been uh, five, six times now. Um, even his follow-up, I've listened to preventative medicine. I've listened to three times and positive masculinity. I've listened to two or three times. So, um, Rolo Tomasi is awesome. You should get his books, The Rational Male. All of them are great, especially the first one. Uh, one new book that's really good is Richard Cooper's book, The Unplugged Alpha. If you don't have that, I'd highly encourage you to check that out. The Unplugged Alpha by Richard Cooper. Um, so anyway, so over the last year, I've been tracking how many listens I'm on with each of these books, okay, that I'm re-listening to, and I track this in Evernote, okay? But you could also do this with a simple note app on your phone. Um, right now, my schedule is to listen to about 18 to 20 minutes a day of Audible while I'm cooking lunch. 
all right? Um, now this makes, this makes it to where if I cook lunch or dinner, it's not a waste of time. If all I was doing was sitting there and cooking lunch and dinner and not listening to anything, then yes, that would be a waste of time and I'd be better off hiring a, a meal prep service. But since I'm combining it with listening to my books, I, that makes it worth it to me. Um, Cause now I actually have time to listen to these audible books because otherwise when else am I going to listen to my audio books, right? The way I see it is time has to be carved out for these at some point, either way, if I'm going to listen to them and why not do it while I am doing something else I have to do, which is eat, right? So I do it while I do that while I'm cooking and eating lunch and dinner. Uh, podcasts I usually listen to during dinner. Um, so the other times of the day and week I listen to books are when I walk to and home from the gym. I have about a 20 minute walk out here to my gym. So I'll listen to books uh, on the way to the gym, during my workout, uh, in the locker room, and on the 20 minute walk home. Okay? So, um, and, you know, and, and like I said, during lunch and dinner. So don't, you have, you've got to find the time to work this stuff into your day. If you really want it bad enough, you'll figure it out, okay? So again, this gives me time to listen to these books. You know, it's not like I'm wasting the time, right? Um, you know, I'm getting exercise in before and after my workouts by walking there, and I'm also exercising my mind as well. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, and believe it or not, like I even have a goal to go beyond that and listen to three to three and a half hours of audible. Okay. Every Sunday. Um, and however I have to get those three, three and a half hours in, even if I just have to sit there and do nothing but listen to it. Um, if that's what I have to do, that's what I'll have to do. Now I will say that I haven't started doing that yet, but uh, it's, it's been tough to get that uh, implemented, <clears throat> but it's a noble goal, at least I think it is. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna give up on it yet. I'm gonna tr try to keep doing that. Cause the thing is, is even, even with all that guys, I still don't feel like I'm getting through enough books. Okay, I still don't feel like it. So take reading seriously. That's what I'm getting at here. Take it seriously. It's one of the most important things a man that wants to excel in life can ever do. Um, uh, I didn't even mention, by the way, in addition to that, I, I read articles, blog articles about, uh, 45 minutes a morning or so. Okay. 40, 45, 50 minutes a morning. So I'm re I'm even reading those too. Um, I've got some great blogs I read. If you guys want some recommendations, let me know in the comments down below. All right. Number eight, admitting to myself this is the last one okay, of habits that changed my life. Number eight, admitting to myself what my fears were and facing them. All right. A lot of people have trouble with this one, which is unfortunate because if you're not able to admit what, what you're afraid of, you're never able to confront those demons and move past them. All right. I believe this to be, uh, an enormous, truly an enormous distinguishing factor between ultra successful men and men who are losers. Losers think they already know everything. Okay. They think they've, they think they have it all figured out already. I'm sure you know people like this. Uh, they also think they have no, no fears at all. All right. Or they might barely acknowledge that they have some, um, you know, they might acknowledge them a little bit, but they never let their thoughts uh, on their fears go past that point. They repress their insecurities and their fears deep down into their subconscious. And as a result, the weaknesses never get dealt with. They never get confronted. These men go years and years, uh, and have no idea where they are weak. All right. And the flip side of that is they also have a cloudy picture of where they aren't weak. Okay. Of where they're strong where their individual strengths lie. Okay. And as a man in today's world, guys, you must know where your strengths and weaknesses lie. Both of them. You must know yourself. All right. In other words, you must know yourself. So it may not be easy to look inwards at yourself <clears throat> too bad. That's what men do. All right. 
stop being a wussy and admit, you know, admit to yourself where you need to improve because until you do that, you're going to stay stuck right where you are. All right. So let's conclude this. There you have it. All right. Um, I'm referencing the article I wrote here as I, as I go through this with you guys. If you haven't read the article, I'll, I have that link down in, in the description below as well. Check it out. And, uh, you know, if you want to change your life for the better, if you're in a rut, then these eight life changes, I think will do it for you. They will transform your life. Okay. Uh, take them seriously, commit to them seriously. And I truly believe they will transform your life. Okay, two to three months from now, you'll be a changed man. All right. Uh, now, if you start to slip again at some point in the future, which is likely, it's often because you stopped doing one or a few things on this list. Simply come back to your center, rewatch this video, read the article, okay, uh, and re implement everything I'm talking about here. Okay. Um, now, one book that I also highly recommend if you really want to change your life is an excellent book that tremendously helped me out. Okay. is a book called live intentionally by harsh strongman. Harsh has got a great blog called life math money. I encourage you to check it out. If you haven't uh, seen it yet, it is one of the best blogs out there. Uh, it's called life math money and his name is harsh strongman and He's sold over five, at the time of this recording, over 5,000 copies of this book, Live Intentionally. <clears throat> so in addition to what I discussed here, guys, if, if you also struggle with procrastination, a lack of discipline, indulgence, okay, uh, maybe you say yes too often instead of saying no, it doesn't matter to what it is, you just say yes to, you give in to your temptations too often, uh, Porn, you watch too much porn, you jerk off too much, you feel like you have no self-control, you don't have enough of it, then this book, Live Intentionally by Harsh Strongman, will transform your life, okay, forever. And it's a 90-day program. He does it in 90 days, okay? You just have to follow it. Um, um, so a lot of the stuff on this list, these eight points I just went over, a lot, you know, some of these were reinforced with this book, okay? And I think one or two of them I even started doing after I read this book. So um, the key to changing and transforming your life, guys, is contained in this video, okay? Just heed this advice, okay? Rewatch this video, read the article, and check out Harsh's book, Live Intentionally. And that will give you all the tools and the tools and, and keys you need to completely turn your life upside down uh, in a good way, okay? To completely do a 180. So um, this is, could be the birth of a new you, all right? If you want it badly enough. So I hope that helped guys. Um, this is Matt Mitchell from missionlifemotion.com. Leave a comment below. Uh, like the video if you found this helpful, smash the like button, smash the like button. It helps me out tremendously when you guys, uh, you know, like these videos or leave a comment. Uh, become a subscriber, more importantly than anything else, become a subscriber. Uh, we just hit a thousand, or I just hit a thousand followers here on the channel. <clears throat> um, channel is going to continue to grow. It's not going anywhere. I've got new videos coming out in the next couple weeks. Uh, you know, more than a couple of them. So stay tuned. Uh, if you don't want to miss any, uh, be a subscriber. All right. Click the subscribe button, uh, and smash the like button. So, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.